Callie's always coming to the croc farm and rashing my little crocs. They're so ugly that they're actually so cute. And I actually love looking at them swimming and fluttering around. Hi. <laughs> oh my God, Greg. And then Greg just walks in and gives me the fight of my life. <sighs> He's so frustrating sometimes. Does he want me to love these creatures or does he want me not to come there and visit him? Do you want to hold one? Yeah, but a little guy. <laughs> oh no, Greg, I <laughs> love it. So soft, eh? Mm-hmm. Check that beast. Don't be fooled. They may seem cute, and they are cute, but if they want a little piece of nyama, they will bite your finger off. So you gotta watch out for those sneaky little critters. So basically I run a, a croc farm here in Mozambique. We, we run a fairly big operation. We've got about 12,000 uh, crocodiles on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm always there uh, checking on the crocs, making sure they're fed properly, making sure they, they're clean properly and they're happy. Greg is a little bit of a macho man sometimes and uh, he thinks he can like jump on crocs like Crocodile Dundee and just be a hero. So I do stress about him a lot because I, the last thing I want is a fiancé with no fingers. And um, yeah, it concerns me. And I tell him all the time, please be careful, don't jump in those pens, but he doesn't listen. So I will find out. I've got my eyes and ears in that croc farm. I love my job, I do. I, I love being, being in the wild and being in the bush. Something new every day, something different every day. It's never the same. Hi. Hello, Zips. Um, I'm exhausted, I'm enough. Yeah? Do you want to have something to eat? Oh my gosh, I was just thinking that. Yeah, I'm starving. I'm gonna go back and eat something, cook something. I bring Greg breakfast now and again to the croc farm or wherever he is when he's working, just because it's important that he gets a full day's work in and he's full and his tummy's full and he's satisfied. He works really hard, so I think it's important he eats well too. And I love it. I mean, it's cooking. Any excuse to make a little pretty lunch box for him, I don't mind. Morning, guys. I'm here in my beautiful outside kitchen on the river again. Always such a beautiful scene here in Africa. I'm cooking this morning a delicious Spanish-inspired African omelette. I've got a little bit of cherry tomatoes, a yellow pepper, and some oyster mushrooms. This is perfect for leftovers, veg that's going a little soft that you can't eat fresh. Don't forget to use things like that in the fridge and not waste. Okay, I'm just gonna do a chunky dice on this. I want it chunky because I want texture and yumminess. Remember, it's an omelette, so you want all different um, flavors obviously, but also so that it's got texture. Right, let's put our onions to one side. Let's grab this pepper. Chunky, nice squares. And lastly, some garlic. Roughly through it all. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do is grab my olive oil. Nice glug in there. Oh, I can see the pan's nice and hot. Keep it a nice moderate heat so everything gets bronzed slowly. And I'm gonna go straight in with all of this now. And just let it sizzle away there. We're gonna chop up our mushrooms that we've got here. I've got oyster today. Just because they're more common here in Africa, I find them a lot easier in this part anyway. Perfect. So these are gonna add beautiful bright bursts to our omelet. Some basil. I'm also gonna grab some chili I've pre chopped up. I eat this with everything. Greg and I are actually obsessed with this stuff. Chili, garlic, olive oil. Have it in your fridge for everything you eat. It's so delicious, especially if you're a chili lover. So I'm just gonna add a little touch of this. Salt. And now I'm ready to add my bacon. And I'm gonna go straight over the top of my pan and I'm just gonna snip the bacon. See how easy that is? Mm, I love bacon. I don't think there's anyone in this world that doesn't love bacon. It's all starting to smell insane over here. So now I'm gonna go in with our sausages, all different shapes and sizes, creating texture. Now the bacon and the sausages are gonna cook like that, so we need to start 
heading in with everything else, all the other ingredients. So we've got our sweet corn and our tomatoes left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add them together. We're going to go right in with the tomatoes and the sweet corn and pour the eggs over. I like to see the yolks kind of swirl through. So that's as much as I'm going to whisk. I don't like to whisk too much. I like having a chunk of yolk and a chunk of white. It just takes it away from that scrambled feel. Remember, it's an omelet. It's not scrambled eggs. Most important thing is seasoning. Don't forget, we've seasoned in there, but we must season our eggs. Salt and pepper. So this is ready to go. The final thing is some parmigiano. Oh, that delicious cheese. Going to give us that creaminess. Give it a final toss so we don't get any burnt bits at the bottom. And you're going to go fast in one movement with the egg. A final grating of parmesan on the top. I'm going to go straight into the oven with this because we need heat on top as well as on the bottom. So here we go. And that's it guys. So now I've got to wait 20 to 25 minutes and it must be served hot and delicious straight out of the oven. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and wait for this to get ready and I'll see you guys in a few. Oh, it smells amazing. And look at what a showstopper this is. Now Greg's got a huge appetite, so I'm going to give him a beast of a piece. There we have my Spanish-inspired African omelet for Gregory. I'm going to zip this up to the cock farm for him, and I'm sure he's going to love it. Yes, this looks amazing, Kelly. <laughs> Delicious. Eh? Greg, he's mm. coming for the food now. Yeah, I have some basil for him. <laughs> no, no, but guy, Panyami and stealing food. Well, we have a little bit of a situation. I think that Panyami has actually got an eating disorder. He eats too much. Oh, he's small, have some but where have you been? In the crock Some lemon. <laughs> Poor bugger. Panyami. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. There we go, there we go. What an absolute waste. I don't mind sharing my breakfast with Panyami. I mean, he's an elephant. Uh, who else can do that? Who else can sh honestly say they can share their breakfast with a baby elephant? Give me Good a lift. boy. Ah! Now don't buck me off or anything. Crazy. <laughs> Slow down, please. Slow down. He's going to start. I'm here. Okay, okay. Gregory. Yeah, shame. shame. Come. I think it's time. <laughs> Thanks for the omelette while it lasted. Oh, it's all of your shirt, man. <laughs> he's well, eaten it all. Yeah, we'll have to go home and get some more. Thank you. No, he's such a pig. He can't have all that food like that. I know. Chicken, he's eating all the crock food as well. Oh, my really good friend Lisa's arriving today. She's such a city girl, and I'm really interested to see how she's going to handle it out here in the bush. I'm going to go fetch Lisa. She's arriving. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Very excited. So I want to take her out on the barge or do something cool. Okay. Maybe organize uh, the Weber and some coals. Yeah. And I'll put that barge in. Yeah, well, I don't know what time you're going to be done, but I'm going to go and have tea and I need to just bake something nice. Okay. So we'll, I'll chill, be chilling with Lisa at the house. Awesome. Sounds great. Butternut wedge, sweetie. Sounds great. Okay. See you later. See you later. Yeah, cool. So I didn't time this very well. Greg wanted breakfast, Panyami stole the breakfast, things got out of hand, then I rode him. And then I suddenly realized that Lisa's at the airport and I think she's been there for like 10 minutes. And she's not really someone that you leave hanging at an airport. And I'm pretty sure that the pilot has already gone out of there. Oh, sorry, it's been so hectic. Oh, oh my God. don't worry about it. Oh, it's so good to see you. It's too beautiful. I'm super excited to see Lise. It's been such a long time, and I actually can't believe she's made such an effort to come all out here and see me. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. I know, I'm so happy to be here, man. Thanks for inviting me. Flesh. We don't have any plans today, so let's go home. I'm going to bake us a little treat. Oh, amazing. What are you making? I'm going to make us a butternut wedge. Is that like a butternut tart? Yeah, like a tart, but like thicker. Okay. And then we'll have a little bit of minty tea. Exactly. And then we'll hit the booze cruise later. Oh yes, a little bit of a gin and tonic, some vino, zips and dips. 
Hi guys, it's the afternoon just after lunch and I'm feeling a little peckish. Lisa's just arrived and I'm really excited to have her here. So we're gonna go and chill in the garden in the shade and eat some butternut wedge and some tea. A sweet treat with a really good vegetable, a butternut. So I've just got some sweet biscuits here. They crush pretty easily. You can use any kind that you prefer. So I'm gonna just put two at a time in here and I'm just gonna crush. So that's the kind of consistency you're looking for. Awesome, we done. So we're just gonna put our pan on the heat here. I'm just gonna light our gas. Don't light this too soon because you don't want the pan to be too hot and you don't want to burn your butter. So I've got about 50 grams here. And in it goes. A few seconds, it all happens really fast, guys. So just make sure you're watching what's going on here. I don't want anything to be burned. Right, we're done. As quick as that. I'm just gonna zip it in there, all of it. And it's all just gonna come together into like chunkier breadcrumbs. You see how nicely it just sticks together from that butter. It's awesome. And we're gonna get on to the little bit of the messy job here. And that's the butternut. So get a clean bowl, basically pull this apart. It should just scoop out like puree. I'm just gonna take my spatula and I'm gonna just start squashing it down a bit. It shouldn't need much work because it's really soft. Obviously, it's been roasting in the oven. Okay, so I'm just gonna taste a little bit of this. Just because butternut can tend to be different. Sometimes you'll get a really sweet one. Sometimes you'll get one that's not so sweet, it's a bit bland. So depending on how sweet it is, that's how much sugar I'm gonna add, basically. So these are really sweet, yum. So I'm only gonna use half a cup of sugar in this. But if you feel it's not sweet enough, just keep adding until you're satisfied. Let's get it all coated in there. I'm only gonna add half of my tin of condensed milk, um, just because it'll be too, too sweet if I add any more than that. And I don't wanna take too much of this beautiful bright orange color away. I love the brightness of it. Now we're gonna season and flavor it up. We've got the butternut, that's the one level. Now I wanna take this to another level. Mixed spice, cinnamon, ginger, lemon zest. Four eggs, so I'm mixing one at a time in here. You have to do one at a time. See, it's starting to really look like liquid now, like a batter, which is exactly what we're looking for. And generally, we're looking at three to four tablespoons of flour, and it's gonna get like a cake batter. That's what we're looking for. Mm, and I love butternut. Yum, 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 yum. We are basically done. The last and final ingredient, which is actually the most important, baking powder. So two heaped teaspoons of baking powder, and we are done, sweetie. I'm gonna put this in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. Remember, it's gooey and stodgy. It's not gonna be dry. It's not a dry cake. It's moist and delicious. So if you poke it with a skewer, that's not gonna tell you that it's ready because it's gonna come out wet. 20 to 30 minutes, maximum 30 minutes, you should be perfect. And there we have it guys, my butternut wedge with meringue topping. I hope you try it out and I hope you like it. But in the meantime, Lisa and I are gonna devour this. Oh, Carl, this looks unbelievable. Thanks, Lise. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Well done, hey, can I pour us some tea? I would love. Cheers. Can I take it? Mm. My mouth's watering. I actually forgot how good this is because every time I make it, Maurice eats it all. Kelly, that is unbelievable. It's good, aim. Eh? Wow, it just melts in your mouth. It's windy now, but it'll die down a bit later for when we go on the boat. So. We started with that. Can we drink alcohol then? Wine, wine, wine. Mm. Hi, Zips. Hi. Hi. Hello, you little biscuits. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Oh, 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 lovely to see you. I'm so excited to go on the barge, on a barge in the middle of Africa with wild animals all around. I've never done that before. So we're going to go fish. Hopefully catch some bream. And then I just thought we'd like to call them. Are you going to fish? Yeah. Really? So are you. 
So yeah, if we can get it like a little bay or something cool, that'd be fun. Check the hippo, car. Where? There, it's tiny. Check right in front of you, Lise. I've never fished before. It's always something that I've wanted to do, but no one's ever actually taught me. So I'm really excited to have Callie and Greg teach me how to fish and hopefully I'll catch a bream. We're chucking the line in these, and then okay. you see this here, just release yes. it, yes. and the, the fishing line go out. Got you. But I learned to fish from my dad. He taught me how to fish. I grew up winding in little mini bream rods and tiger fish rods. So it's actually quite cool. My whole life I've learned how to fish. How long does it take? Just take her one. No, I just sat down. But, okay, well, guys, I think, it's, I think it's here. Whatever, are you serious? Yes. Go, Greg. I was so shocked when I caught the bream. <laughs> okay, you gotta let go of the side. Wait, wait, wait. Tighten your drag. Tighten it, tighten it. Go, go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Yeah, just tighten it. All of a sudden, I felt this pull at the end of my rod. Never expected it. I was really nervous that I was gonna let the fish go. It's easy and slowly does it, and I just reel this in. Guys, I caught a fish! <laughs> yes, me! That well is done. I actually can't believe that you actually got a fish. <laughs> this is incredible. I am dying. That is amazing. That's perfect size to cook as well. Yum. Are we going to cook this fish that I caught? Yes, of course. Got him. Get this yes. Beauty. Can I touch him? Yeah. <laughs> Let me kiss it. <laughs> amazing. Let's find a spot, please, so we can go and bry it. Kelly clean and gut a fish. I never ever thought I would see the day. She had so much guts, so much chutzpah, she just went straight in for it. I was, it was unbelievable. I think it's really important to know how to do these things, clean fish and that. I obviously, I know we're spoiled, we can go to the butchery, we can go to the fishmonger and get everything prepared for us. But there's such a satisfaction in catching a fish, cleaning a fish and then cooking a fish. It's so inspiring to others and you feel inspired that you've been able to do this on your own and you feel proud. It's all your dish. You did everything from the catching to the preparation to the cooking. It's awesome and I encourage everyone out there to try it. So guys, Lisa has caught me the most beautiful fish. I actually still can't believe that she caught it. I'm sitting here in the middle of the Korobasa. Water everywhere I look. It's absolutely magnificent. It's just real Africa. I've got some beautiful coals here. They're really, really hot and ready. Charcoal, wood, whatever you've got at home will work just fine on any grill. I've got three layers of tin foil here. Main reason being we're gonna get so many delicious juices from this fish and we don't wanna lose that in the flame and in the fire. We want it to all stay in here and steam and just make everything yummy. And don't forget to pour yourself a crispy glass of white wine with fish, it always is the best. Delish. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is get our olive oil. I'm just gonna obviously give it a bit of a glug, oil it up, make things glossy. So what I'm gonna do is take the things that I've already prepared and just kind of sprinkle them around. So I've got some green beans here, I've topped and tailed them. I like to leave the tops off, but I do cut the tails off just because there's nothing wrong with that and it, it makes it look rustic. Sprinkle them all around. I've also got some cherry tomatoes. I'm going to go whole with these because they're so little. If they're too big, chop them in half. Onion, halve it. And I'm not going to chop it finely. I'm going to do nice big slices because you still want the crunchiness and the flavour of stuff. I'm going to do nice long slices like this and we keep it thick. I've chosen yellow pepper just because I've got red, I've got green, I've got yellow, and I want as many colors as I can because it just vibes it up, brightens it up. And I'm just gonna slice it the same way I've sliced my onion here. Long, perfect. Then lastly, I'm gonna take half the lemon because I wanna use half the lemon's juice, and I'm gonna use half the lemon to stuff into the cavity. Gives it a fresh, vibrant flavor, it's amazing. Perfect, and we're gonna keep this for squeezing. Bring that back here. Oh, it looks amazing, amazing, amazing. And now I'm going to stuff all these onions into the cavity. Then I'm gonna take the lemon wedges and I'm gonna stick them in. Scatter it around. Delicious deliciousness. 
I mean, look at all the colors. It just looks so, so beautiful. And I know some people are kind of ooh about cooking fish whole because it's ugly, but it's the best way and it's in its true form and you can get as much of the flesh and the delicious meat as possible. So when you're eating it, you miss things like the cheek. Believe it or not, a fish has a cheek and it is the best, best part of the fish. Well, it's my favorite anyway. And the best thing about this fish, obviously, is that Lisa caught it today, which is amazing, right out of this lake. How cool. Sprinkle all these delicious veg around just to make sure it's coated and it's gonna cook nicely. I didn't put any garlic in the cavity, notice that, because it gets really bitter. Garlic needs heat, direct heat, so that it becomes bronzed and kind of roasted, if I can say roasted, we're not roasting, but that effect anyway, if it's in there, it's gonna steam up and it's not gonna taste great, it's gonna be all bitter, I've tried it. So I'm taking these whole cloves, I'm just gonna pull them apart and I'm just gonna randomly just cut it into chunks. Fish is such a beautiful flavor on its own. You don't wanna overpower it with huge spices and flavors. You wanna enjoy the fish for what it is. Fresh, caught today, don't overload with the flavors. So what I'm actually gonna do with these chilies is I'm gonna split them down the middle just so I can open up all the aromas and vibes and we're gonna get some of that chili heat but not too much. And I'm literally, I'm not even gonna peel this piece of ginger, I'm just gonna go with it everywhere. And it's gonna create like a paste, like that. And we're gonna rub that all over the fish. Cool, I think that's enough. So I'm gonna take my knife, and I'm just gonna scrape all that delicious ginger. Look at that, that's like a paste. So good. Salt. Okay, pepper. I'm gonna get some Sprigs of mint here, beautiful mint. You can use any herb that you like, basil, but I'm gonna do mint just because it's fresh and it goes well with this fish. And I've got amazing lemon thyme. The last thing I'm gonna do is actually take a splash of my white wine and I'm gonna just drizzle it to create that steaminess. We need some steam going on in here in the form of a liquid. So I'm gonna close this now and let it steam away. These take so, so quick to cook, but we don't want them to be raw, we just want them to be just cooked and tender. So we're gonna chuck those in two minutes, just before we are ready to eat. Wow, look how amazing this looks. Oh, it smells incredible. All the flavors, all the garlic, all the ginger, it's just coming straight for me. And there we have it, guys. This is my whole bream grilled on the Weber. It's delicious and fresh and I love it. I hope you try it out at home and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Now let's see what Lisa and Greg think about it. How do we eat this? Okay, just hook it. What do you mean? Can I oh dig Look in at the that. Go, just go. Grab a bunch. Take your lemon. Squeeze it over. And oh my gosh. don't bring yourself. Can I put tomato on? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, Close oh, your mouth. Whoa. Yeah, watch your bones. Okay. Both are fill apart, yeah. It's hot. That is oh my God, that's amazing. Hum, soft and moist. Mm. Kelly, that is mm. the best fish I've ever eaten. 